Okay, hello everyone. It's Kenny once again. Today we will be looking at another problem that we'll be solving using the Python programming language. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to share my screen so we'll see what the problem is and we'll think about how to solve it. So we'll discuss the algorithm that we we'll use to so it's just a basic math problem, but would um, look at the code side of solving that problem, right? Sorry guys, today I'm not using my video because it's quite late and I don't have enough lights. So that's why you will not be seeing my face today. All right, so here's the problem. Write a Python program to check whether a given integer accepted from the user is even or odd. Print out an appropriate message to the user. Do you understand? So that's what we're going to. We'll check first if it's an even number or an odd number, then we would output an appropriate message to the console. Hope you understand the problem. So how do we um, get into this? Let's consider what even numbers and prime number and uh, even numbers and odd numbers are. Okay. So what's an even number? One that is divisible by two, leaving a remainder of zero. That's my definition of an even number. And then if there is a remainder after um, division by two, then it's an odd number. That's what we're going to check. So if the user puts A, imputes A, and I want to test if it's even or odd, then I suppose that um, a good approach would be to try to divide that number by two. So we divide the number A divided by two, and then we'll check see if there's a remainder. Now, if there is a remainder, it is odd. So if, for example, there isn't any remainder, so remainder of zero, then that number is even, okay? So that, that's the procedure. Every time we get a number, we try to divide by two and we'll see what remainder and what remains. And if what remains is nothing, that is, it's, it's zero, then it's an even number. But if there's something um, greater than zero as a remainder, then that number must be odd. Do you understand? So let's code it up, guys. So we'll get the input from the user and we'll collect that in a variable. You no, know, we discussed the concept of variables in programming, right? It's just a storage. So I'm going to create a variable, say, num, num string, because whatever we collect as input is um, returned as a string. Even though it's a number, it's treated as a string. So we need to do type conversion to get it to become an integer or a floating point number. So num string and input, what's the prompt? Let's say, um type in an integer it must be it must be an integer so no floating points here guys type in an integer number type in an integer number so the user gives an integer and then we'll take that in a variable called num string norms true in this case. And then we need to convert that norm string to a real integer. So I'm going to create another variable there. And I take the norm string using an int method called int. An int method called int there, int and simply convert the norm string to an integer this way. 
So that's that. Right. Then I'm just going to check by dividing that number. I will divide the number by two. If there is a remainder, then it's even. And if, I mean, sorry, if there's a remainder, then it's odd. And if there isn't, that is, um, there's a remainder of zero, then it is even. But how do I get that remainder in programming? How do we implement that? So there's this operator in most programming languages, actually. It's called the modulus, modulus operator. And it's given as this percentage sign. That's the modulus operator. So you use that in place of the division sign. And what it returns is the remainder from that operation. So if I say, for instance, five, five modulus two, it will return one because one is the remainder. So that's how we use the modulus operator. I, I wanted to um, talk to us about the modulus operator and that's why I um, decided to present us with this problem, this math problem, just so that I'm able to talk about the modulus operator. Right, so we take that num and check, divide by two, right? So I'm going to use an if else block, an if else block there. If num modulus two is equal to zero, that is what I'm saying here is if, this number divided by two returns a remainder of zero, then it is even. So I need to display an appropriate message to the user. Okay, so if num, another thing we need to do, I keep forgetting this, we need to indent because in Python, indentation is of the essence. So we mustn't forget to indent, all right? So I'm just going to click on edit and Indent selection, right? So if norm modulus two gives zero, print, it's just a quick one, nothing too fancy. Your number or you imputed, you imputed or rather you supplied an even number. So that's it. That's what it's going to be. Else, else, what should happen? I just want to print to the console this message. You supplied an odd number. Right. So that's it. Just basic, basic maths. Just uh, I just wanted us to understand the use of the modulus operator. And so don't forget the colon sign there. Let's run our program and see what we have. Type in an integer number. So I'm going to say seven. You supplied an odd number. So that's, that's it. Now let me put an even number and see what we get. Type in an integer 120, you supplied an even number. But guys, you don't want your program to um, crash. So if a user imputes a special character or a letter, how do you handle it? Because it's definitely going to um, throw an error when we try to divide a non-numeric value by a numeric value, there'll be a problem. So we can't divide A, we can't say A divided by two. There'll be an error and that will crash the program. So we need to handle the error. You don't need all this stuff, just um, shouting at your at the user, you know, all over the screen. So how do I do that? I need to first check if that, no, if what is imputed is actually a number, okay? So how do I do that? I'll take num, 
I'll take norm and use an if block. There's a Python method called, um, there's, you know, we need to, okay, let's look at the class. We are going to check if what the user imputed has the type is, um, an, is of type integer. That's how I will put it. So we're just going to use type. If num is an instance. So that's the method that I'm talking about is instance. So if the norm is an instance of the integer class, then proceed. And if it's not, do something else. Okay, so if it's instance and I should give the number, then int. If it's of type int, what should happen? You get, so I will just indent this again. So that's the upper if is higher, you know, on the ranking than the inner if. So if this is the case, if norm is a type of integer, then I can go on with my um, division. Else, else, if it's not of type integer, then I'm going to output a message to the console. So I'll say print, hey, respect yourself, respect yourself. We need, we need an integer. So that's just it. So now I'm going to try again. This time I will give say F and then we'll see what it gives us in return. So say F. Okay, invalid literal for int. So that's the error there on line seven. I shouldn't, this is just going to be taken off, guys. Shouldn't have left it there. Oh, sorry. I'm not going to try to do the conversion here. Not at all. So I'm just going to take, take this norm. I'm just going to take norm string. Then right here, I'll do the conversion before I divide by two. So in norm string. Okay. I think it's better that way. Let me run D. So we, we get it now. Hey, respect yourself. We need an integer. So once you type it in, it's just going to check if it's an integer or not. But I need to check something. What if I give a number, but yes, that's the problem. Because you know, we said that once you impute a value, it's going to be treated as a string, right? So I'm just going to, in this case, I'm going to use a try catch block here. I think that's the best approach. So let me use try catch in this instance. So try. Except. So let's try it again. I'll put five 
you supplied an odd number. So that works. And let me give, um, say, eight, supplied an even number. And let's try a letter this time, say, letter D. And see what it gives us. Hey, respect yourself. We need an integer. So I, it's, I think that's, uh, for me, the best way to go about it. Just uh, use a try, try accept block. I said try catch. Well, you know, this is Python. So it's try accept. Then remember that we can just have the finally. I'm just going to use it just for the purpose of explaining the use of the finally block. So I will just print, thank you. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you and have a nice day. Uh -huh. Like that. So let's run again. I'll give D. Thank you. And so whatever happens, the finally component of that try except uh, block will be executed. All right. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more problems to solve using Python programming language. Bye.